On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the Eagles performing Desperado live in 2023 and another performance from 2024. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I'm going to have to give you some background behind this video because it could be quite an important one given the findings of this particular investigation and analysis that I have conducted. I was emailed by somebody recently and they said that they've been watching some Eagles performances and Don Henley's vocal sounds eerily similar in every one of these live performances. So he got the vocal, isolated it and tried to listen to it over the top of itself. And these are from different performances. And he said that it just sounds exactly the same, but he doesn't know how to get into a lot of detail about it. So he's given it to me so that I can dive into it as we usually do with the analysis videos. So he sent me the videos that he'd been comparing and they were all fan filmed, just fan footage from the gigs, which means that they're not gonna be post edited, but you will get some ambient noise because of the crowd there. So one of the videos I discounted and I just said, there's too much ambient noise there to get any kind of credible information from it when we are analyzing Don Henley's vocal. So I then just had two performances left, uh, one from 2023, one from 2024 this year. And the isolated vocal from those performances were relatively good. You still got a little bit of ambient noise and people talking, but you can definitely hear because of that, that they are two separate performances. So just before we get into it, I've got to explain a few technical things about the analysis because I have found something and you need to be able to reference this information I'm about to tell you with what you're looking at and what the information means that we're looking at. So first of all, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you'll know that we have the pitch monitoring software on screen and these lines will come up and this is Don Henley's voice from one of the live performances. And what I'm going to be doing is looking at the other performance and looking at the same vocal lines. And you've got to take into consideration these are two separate performances and two entirely different, you know, ambient settings, acoustic spaces, potentially. There are lots of variables in there with people talking, you know, at a low level in the background, all that kind of stuff. So we've got these lines that will appear on screen. And what we're going to do to begin with is you will be able to see the lines from one of the performances on screen, but I'm going to do what the person who emailed me did, i.e. listening to the voices, not over the top of each other. I'm panning them left and right. So make sure that you're listening to this in stereo. Let's just have a quick listen. Yeah. And just quickly, we know that these are different performances because if you were listening in, we had crowds cheering on the left-hand side at one performance and at the other performance, the crowd didn't really get picked up as much or at least because it's a different performance, they weren't cheering like at the other performance, but let's listen on. I'm just going to jump in here because I think there's no denying if you're listening to this closely, maybe even in headphones, it sounds like one voice. We have 
zero variation in the phrasing of the vocal, in the pitch of the vocal. So when I thought it was just going to be a you know open and shut case that I'd listen to it and think, well, you know, these are two separate performances from different years. So of course it's going to be different, but then I listened to it. So I'll explain what we're looking at. You can see that I've added the date here. So this is the American version of the date, which means it's the 8th of March, 2024. And the other performance is from the 13th of October in 2023. So when we start seeing other lines coming on screen, such as like this, then that is the other performance that I'm overlaying so that we can see if anything looks similar. Because we've got ambient noise between the two performances and the performances are two separate performances, nothing should match up really. It is impossible for anything to be the same with these two pitch graphs that we're about to look at. And I'm going to demonstrate now as to how sound doesn't match up, that it's impossible to replicate something twice, especially live, but even in a studio here, I'm going to sing something, or I'll sing a bit of this song, and we'll just sing the first line of the song. So, Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? We'll obviously get a double tracked sound, but just to point out that when something sounds the same, when you look at it in detail, you can see that it was actually a different vocal take. So let's have a listen. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? So, you might be able to hear between those two, the S's are slightly out of time with each other, but that has happened in studio releases where somebody's double tracked their voice and you can hear the S's and the T's are slightly out of time with each other. But going back, I mean, obviously it's gonna look like a bit of a mess because we've got both of the lines from both vocal takes over the top of each other. But when I zoom in, the good thing about it is we can see actually, and let me just get this exactly lined up. There we go. So now the pitches, the graph is perfectly lined up. You can see how different the pitch is from one take to the next. And even though it sounds the same, what would have been more subtle if I move it over a little bit, are these changes where you have maybe a difference of 10 to 15 cents. And again here, maybe even kind of 10 cents difference there. So really subtle differences that the ear can't hear. I just quickly want to point out something about the way that this is displayed when you are placing one pitch graph over another. Sometimes if you look here, if I skip forward by one frame, you can see that the gap has now increased between these lines. And that's nothing to do with the way that the pitch monitoring software is picking up pitch and plotting it. It's purely how this footage has been captured at 30 frames per second. And for each of these captures independently. So it means that 30 frames get stretched out across one second. And those two videos aren't synchronized. So it means that when one video is stretching out a frame to last longer to spread over one second, another video might be using that frame to move the image on. So that's why the lines will go out of sync every now and again. But in order to counteract that, I actually move these around. So now, they are totally free to be moved. So it doesn't matter about the timing because we can move it to the relevant point and match them up to then you know, see the difference between, in this case, these two vocal takes. We're gonna get into this and I'm just gonna let one of the vocals play through, but I will be bringing on top the other vocal from the other year. And this is going to be uh, 2024 that we're looking at and I mean, it's not really important to have the date on there because we know that they're from 2023 and 2024, the lines. So let's have a listen. And I'm just gonna stop it after one vocal phrase just to see where we are at with these lines. And this is now from a totally different performance and I'm actually going to drag it down. And like I've already said, 
There should really be absolutely no correlation between these two vocal performances because, firstly, of the ambient noise, but secondly, that these are two totally different vocal performances that they're never, ever going to, well, line up, but that they're never going to be perfect replications of each other. So already immediately we've got a bit of an echo here going on. And what I mean is just looking at these lines because we've kind of gone up to our peak here. And actually, let me do what I was pointing out before we did this as to these peaks and looking at exactly where these peaks fall. So let me just move this up a little bit. And you can see how from one vocal take to the next, we've got a perfect, pretty much, matching of that peak. But, you know, the way that we come down, and then we've got up, and we come down, we go up, and then we come all the way down, all the way down, we go up again, we go up again, and, yeah, they're starting to already to look similar. This is literally the first line of the song, but what I'll do is I'll get rid of that, and we'll get back to the normal view, and I will uh, let this play through. So long now. And I'm just interested to see if the other one picked up anything there. Wow. Okay, right, let me just zoom in on this. Again, let's let's get this in perspective. We're just at the beginning of the song and we're getting I mean I would say that that is almost a perfect replication if I bring it up. Accounting for the ambient noise and the fact that this is like a year later, matching it to this degree, yeah, it, it is impossible unless it's the same audio. And looking over here, if I'm now getting rid of this, it's almost like these lines over on this side are completing each other here, because in one live performance, the pitch monitoring software didn't pick it up, or at least the ambient noise might have got in the way of just this little section. But when we bring on the other performance, it now makes sense of it. And again, when I said earlier about the lines going out of sequence, that's due to the frame rate of the video. And when we then adjust for that frame rate, and then look at each phrase independently like this, we can see that we're again now getting this echo. So. Yeah, <laughs> I know people are already going to think. So what you're saying already is that a live performance from 2023 and a live performance from 2024 was the same vocal being played. Yes. And does that mean that Don was even singing? No, because it's the same vocal. And uh, not that I'm really going to get into it in this video, but if somebody asked for my professional opinion on whether this was not only a mimed vocal, but a pitch corrected vocal. So Don's recorded this in the studio, but they're making it sound live. So, you know, they're not kind of adding everything that you do to a live vocal. Like, for example, using a de -esser and getting rid of the, the overpowering S's and T's. They're leaving that on the mic or when they're recording in the studio, they're leaving that on so it sounds live. Then what they're doing is they're pitch correcting this live vocal that's going to be used later for live. And then when they're performing, Don is miming to it. And this is why these are lining up because it's the same vocal. And there's no other explanation for it. There's no reason on earth that these should match up from one performance to the next. It's absolutely impossible. And any producer will tell you this, anybody that knows about, you know, pitch and, and sound waves and, and the, the voice and how much natural variation you get in the voice from great singers, fantastic singers can't replicate their performance on these lines from one performance to the next. It's an absolute impossibility. So now that we've just seen that first part, Rather than kind of listening through, we're just going to kind of skim through this. It just should not be happening at all with, with two vocals that are at totally different times. I mean, look at, I mean, this is another quite a good, quite a good example here. I'm just thinking of showing this in a different way so that you can see the similarities. Imagine that this is like a castle and you've got, you know, this part here and there's like a, I don't know, a little hill in the background or something 
When I then bring on the other vocal, and I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of that one. We've now got the same castle and we've got the same little hill in the background. So this is what I mean that this perfect replication of the image this should not be happening. They shouldn't look like the same castle and the same hill in the background. Yeah, I mean, I'm amazed that, well, that, that, that it matches, first of all. Oh, this reminds me. Because these matched like this, I thought this has got to be the same video. That it's got to be the same audio because that's what this means. So I went to the videos and I'm going to drag this over here to one of the videos because I looked at it and I thought the audio, maybe it's just mistakenly the video has been sent to me and they don't realize it's just somebody sitting in a different part of the stadium when it's being played or the arena. So I had a look at this performance and then I had a look at the other performance and in certain points, I thought, well, you know, it, it could be the same one. And there were points at which I thought, look, oh, it's a little bit blue and we have these stars in the background. So I went back to this one and thought, oh, look, we've got blue and stars in the background. But then I noticed what Don was wearing. <laughs> so you can see here, links are going to be in the description below to, to watch these videos independently. But you can just make out here that Don has on a waistcoat and a, a cream or a, a light colored shirt in this performance. And when we go here, he's now wearing a dark colored shirt. So these are entirely different performances. So because of what we're seeing, I thought it had to be the same and it's just been a mistake and that's the reason, but it's not. These are two separate performances. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep on kind of skimming through this. But I know that we're just, you're going to start seeing things that look like the same thing underneath. Uh, I mean, it's, it really is so exact. But anyway, I'll keep skimming through. This is only 58 seconds into the performance. And, you know, it's an almost four minute video. So we'll keep on going through. Again, I just want to highlight the fact that with the ambient noise, uh, that's why we see lots of different sections that don't match up because of people talking and that getting picked up. But where it does pick up the main signal, which is Don's voice, because it's a lot louder than everything else, that's where you'll start to see these replications of the same vocal lines underneath each other. So we'll just keep on going through. And again. And by the way, when we are going through, you'll see the software kind of moving up and down. So that's why it's not always in line uh, because the software just goes to where it can hear the note in order to give you the best view. And sometimes it's a little bit slower uh, because obviously these are two different performances. So it's moving around hearing lots of different things apart from when it does actually lock into the vocal. And then when we actually grab it, move it over the top, you'll see that we've got that. Just a perfect replication of the voice from one performance to the next. And I know that I'm just saying the same thing over and over again, but I, I think this is huge to know that the Eagles, and we're just talking about the lead vocal here, so I'm not saying anything for the backing vocals. I'm not saying anything for, for playing the instruments, but all I know is this perfectly matches up from one night in one year to another night in another year. And I'm talking instrumentally as well and backing vocals wise, it matches up perfectly because if they don't match up perfectly, these would not be able to be even placed over the top of each other because the, the vocal phrasing would be different. So I'm not saying anything about that. Again, my professional opinion is that they're playing to a click track and then at least they're nailing it to a click track so then it makes the vocal which is being mimed perfectly with the backing or perfectly in time with the backing and I don't want to believe or think that the Eagles aren't even playing live and that it's just a backing track with the vocal on it as well and that it's all a mimed thing. I, I want to think that at least they're playing to a click track um, but this conclusively shows that it is the same vocal potentially night after night after night that is happening. 
you cannot do this. Look at the way that I'm scrolling through this and we're getting per, you know, again, we're looking like we're getting another perfect castle uh, that is repeating itself. And the variations that we do see when the software or at least the, the isolated vocal from one performance isn't heard clearly because they're obviously uh, different events. It means that you will start to get a, a bit of variation in what's being plotted here because it's it's not hearing the vocal as clearly. But when, when it does hear it clearly, that, that's where we can clearly see that it's just the same thing. I mean, again, here we go. Uh, this kind of telltale thing of just doing exactly the same with the lines. I mean, even here, <laughs> it didn't really pick it up very clearly, but, aha. I mean, yeah, you can't get any more conclusive than that. Um, let me zoom in. So here, I don't know whether you can see, I'm just going to zoom in again, because this point here, this point here, you can see it is so, it is so exact. You know, that's a millisecond worth of pitch to zero sense that has been replicated twice. Let me just try and get it in line. So uh there you go so that point again this is a tiny bit of data here that is impossible to replicate twice with a natural voice from one performance to the next so yeah and, and the fact that it's such a distinct point um is, is a really good illustration actually that it is you know not somebody cheering in the background at exactly the same pitch for that exact same millisecond at a different gig this is showing that what the pitch monitoring software is picking up is Don's vocal that has hit exactly the same peak and same point at precisely the same time during both of these performances. I, I don't know how much or how many times I need to say the same thing, but because this is so huge, at least in my mind, but I think it is for people buying tickets thinking they're hearing a live vocal, this is so huge that You've got to, I've got to show it in this detail because replicating this kind of thing and, and more importantly, this kind of thing, if I was to draw a straight line between these two, again, with this isn't really even a note. This is just a little bit of expression on the recorded vocal so, and it happens at exactly the same point in this run up that there's no explanation for it other than it being exactly the same vocal played on a, on a different night. Look at this. I mean, the same thing going on here, you know, this notch and then up notch and then up and, you know, let me just put it over the top of each other and then they match up again. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a shame because, you know, I like the Eagles, so, you know, yeah. Don Henley allows me to have on my channel a cover of Hotel California um, because, yeah, um, Hotel California gets blocked all over the place on YouTube, but mine's been cleared. And I'm now having to point out that when we're looking at a live performance, it's, n it's not a live vocal. It's actually mimed to. And like I said, in my professional opinion, uh, here, oh, here's the piece de resistance. Uh, in, in my professional opinion, it's a pitch corrected vocal as well. But I mean, you can see that from the way that this is being held. But that's not the reason it's the piece de resistance. It's because look at the lines. Look at, I mean, I could almost, it's like a puzzle. I, I could stick this one underneath. And all of these lines here, this is absolutely impossible to do this unless you're just playing the same vocal. And as you guys know, with the pitch monitoring software that I use, you know how accurate it is. The, I mean, I've already demonstrated it earlier by singing the same thing and it, it won't go over itself because there are tiny variations that, that you just can't replicate, even in your own voice, trying to do the same thing into a microphone over and over again, let alone having like a performance from one year to the next and trying to replicate it. Having this kind of replication and these movements of lines to this level matching this precisely, yeah, there's just no other explanation for it other than the audio is just the same audio. And this pitch monitoring software is 
just objective. It will just tell you what it's listening to and it will plot the pictures of what it's listening to. So it gives you such a fantastic idea of, you know, one vocal and another vocal, if it's mimed, if it's not mimed, if something's pitch corrected or auto-tuned, it's just going to show it on screen. And, you know, it's this kind of thing that if you're looking at this below the line, above the line, down, you know, to the line, that does actually touch the line. And then it goes up a little bit. This goes up a little bit, back down, below the line, back down, below the line, up above the line, back down, below the line, below the line. And then here, we go up a little hill, and then we go up to another little hill. And here, down here, we go up a little hill, and then we go up another little hill. And then we go all the way down, and we go down. And again, significantly flat, significantly flat, significantly sharp, significantly sharp. Right, that's enough of this. So, I mean, what does this mean for live performances? What it does mean is that you can spend hundreds of pounds or dollars to go and watch a live performance and it might be the case that they're not singing. And especially with a band like the Eagles, I think people assume that they are going to see the Eagles singing and hear it. So now that we know that it's a vocal that's being mimed to, then I would say, is, is, is that f false advertising? Is it fraud? I don't know. <laughs> this is for somebody that's involved in law to be able to maybe distinguish because... I'm pretty sure that when you buy tickets to go and see any band, but especially the Eagles, you are assuming that they are singing live. And if they're not singing live, would people want to be told that? I think, as a fan myself, I would like to know. I can't think of any other profession where you can not do what you are paid to do and but still take the money for it. Like, you know, an airline pilot or something turning up and he doesn't or she doesn't fly the plane because a computer does it. But when they get to the destination, he gets his paycheck and then he just sits on the plane and goes to another destination. He's having some nice holidays and he's getting paid for that, but he's not doing the job. And then you could say, well, why don't we just hire somebody who isn't a pilot? But because they're not doing the job anyway. <laughs> so, so, yeah, like I said, I don't know any other um, walk of life where this kind of thing can be replicated where you're paying money for somebody doing something that you are trusting that they're doing because it's their job, but they're not actually doing it. They're just putting something else in its place, but still getting paid, still taking your money. I think this is always uh, a problem, has always been a problem with the music industry of knowing what you're listening to and transparency, knowing what you're buying, knowing whether somebody's changed their voice, pitch corrected it, auto-tuned it, or in this case, mimed along. So yeah, I mean, in conclusion, sadly, this rabbit hole has just got a hell of a lot deeper when you take this into consideration. So it's now not only a case of pitch corrected vocals after a live performance, it's now a case of the live performance being a pitch corrected vocal that's being mimed to. So it's, it's kind of even gone past auto-tune now. Now, at least auto-tune <laughs> is taking a noise and tuning it. Uh, and pitch correction, it can't be applied live. So you've got to do a performance and then edit it with pitch correction after the fact and then release it on YouTube or whatever. So now it sounds perfectly in tune. But yeah, now it's just purely skip, you know, skipped over, cut out the middle, man. Let's just mime to a pitch corrected vocal because nobody will know. Apart from everybody that is subscribed to my channel <laughs> because, yeah, I've just uh, pointed it out. But this is why we do it. It's totally objective. We point out what we can see and exactly what's going on with the music industry nowadays. And it is sad that, yeah, we've got this situation where a band uh, like this are doing this live. But it is what it is. So thank you for requesting this video in the first place and sending me these videos. I haven't got the permission of the person who sent them to me to say their name, but I can say their full name it is Patrick. So uh, thank you for sending me the videos, Patrick, and asking that I investigated it in a little bit more detail. And I mean, you've got a good ear to be able to tell that it sounded like the same voice. So yeah, I can confirm that it is indeed uh, the same pre-recorded voice that's being mimed to live in both of these performances. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. As always, let me know what you guys think. Keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!